welcome to Mainland Television, Nelson's regional station. I'm Graham O'Brien and a few of the stories we have in this weekly roundup. Kidnapping and drugs in Nelson lead to arrests. Search update for helicopter. Nelson's free parking sorted. 20 year old Nelson festival kicks off next week. Over 50s uphill and fighting fit and much much more. A Nelson police operation has ended with gang related arrests after a Richmond home near Nelson was invaded by four armed gang associates last Monday, triggering a search by Nelson police at three local addresses early Thursday morning. The operation involved up to 40 police staff and Nelson armed defender squad and targeted two Nelson city and one Richmond address. Four local men have been arrested and charged with a variety of serious offences, including aggravated robbery and kidnapping in relation to Monday night's incident. Police believe the incident was drug related. Head of Nelson Bay's CIB Detective Senior Sergeant Craig Johnston said that police regarded any gang related intimidation or home invasion as a serious threat to community safety and it will not be tolerated in any form. Nelson Police want to encourage people to come forward with any information they may have about this incident or similar gang related attempts to intimidate and extort property by use of weapons and other forms of violence. Four men aged 44, 40, 38 and 34 appeared in Nelson District Court on Thursday late afternoon on a variety of serious charges relating to Monday night's incident. Police opposed a bail. A special consultation process relating to the proposed Waimea Community Dam based in Lee Valley will begin this Monday the 13th of October, closing on the 14th of November. The Tasman District Council is consulting with ratepayers and residents on the proposed funding and governance options for the dam. A decision whether or not to build the dam will be made in June next year. Meanwhile, public meetings and information centres are being held throughout the district over the consultation period. Missing helicopter update at the time of going to air, still no sign has been found of the helicopter from Karamea missing since Tuesday morning in an area of Tasman's Kaharangi National Park, 35 kilometres west of Mutueka, in the Nelson region. Four helicopters and five ground teams with a total of 20 searchers involved in the ongoing search. Searching continued Friday with two fresh ground teams replacing two teams that had been searching in steep bush-clad terrain for two days. The Robson 44 helicopter with one person on board went missing on Tuesday morning during a flight from Karamea on the west coast to Nelson. Based on analysts of routes taken on previous flights between Karamea and Nelson, a new focus was added within the same broad area on Thursday. Meanwhile, the Nelson Marlborough Rescue helicopter has had a busy couple of days. While continuing to assist with the Kaharangi National Park search, the helicopter was dispatched on Wednesday the 8th around midday by Wellington Rescue Coordination Centre to a beacon activation near Angelus Hut in the Nelson Lakes National Park. High winds and cloud hampered access to the Alpine Basin, however the helicopter crew were eventually able to offload the onboard paramedic and a party of four were located in the Angelus Hut, with a 24-year-old Frenchman unable to continue due to an ankle injury. However, deteriorating weather conditions meant that the medic had to remain with the group until the following morning when conditions improved and the helicopter was able to return. The group was then lifted off the mountain and flown to safety in St Arnold. On the 9th of October, the helicopter was called to the Motueka Valley around midday where a 31-year-old Frenchman on a working holiday had severely injured his hand. The man was treated at the scene before being flown in a stable condition directly to Hutt Hospital for specialist surgery. This week the topic of Nelson's free parking came back to haunt council in their chamber of decisions. I went along to watch the process. One Nelson business, Benge & Co Greengrocer, stated that his figures for the last three years showed that he had a growth of 5% and since free parking he had taken a 5% decrease due to people taking up parking for long term. He was still in favour of maintaining the concept of free parking, but under different rules. Nelson City Council CEO Claire Hadley asked councillors to not pick and mix the recommendations made by administration on the free parking, but to vote on them as a package. Councillors unanimously voted for the proposed recommendations, which are, the first hour of parking is free in all areas, but a ticket still must be displayed followed by an increase in fees to $1.50 per hour after the first free one. Hours of warden patrols will also be increased from 8am to 5pm, which is an hour earlier than previously rostered. 
That means that this arrangement is another trial period beginning on the 20th of October until the 6th of April 2015. We sent Stephanie to speak with some businesses about the free parking issue. So free parking, has it been a good or a bad thing for Nelson? I think it's been really great. Um, it's bringing more customers in store. Um, we have a lot of great feedback from the customers as well. And I live in Richmond, so I come in a lot more as well. <laughs> I think it's been a good thing. You know, we've got um, more people coming into our business centre. Yeah, definitely, definitely good. It's been a fantastic thing. Um, I think it's drawn a lot of new people into the centre city, not being scared of getting the fines um, that everybody was scared of getting. Um, but saying that, we've always had free parking here. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good thing and it should be kept on. It's a good thing uh, for the Nelson because uh, uh, it's good because it's good for the uh, retailer because uh, uh, more customers comes in. Uh. Oh, I think it's been a very good thing for Nelson that they've had free parking over the winter. Um, we certainly need to have something that attracts locals into into town uh, during that quiet period. So, um, so yes, I believe free parking has been uh, a good experiment, and I'd like to see it again next year. Well, for the winter, I think it's a good thing. We do then get our locals into the, the city CBD and um, using the parking. But in the summer, uh, I came yesterday to town and I couldn't get a car park. I was sitting waiting for somebody to reverse out because the, the car parks are already too full. Uh, so for summer trade, we've got a lot of tourists, we've got a lot of visitors. I really don't actually agree with free parking for the summer. Uh, particularly since it is a rate payers, uh, you know, paying for that. Why, why aren't we actually um, asking our people to come into town and still pay for their $1 parking? The great thing for Nelson, I think it's really, really important. Um, and it's a, a point of difference between ourselves and our retail competitors in Richmond. Um, having free parking just makes us more, yeah, um, approachable. And our customers in particular like to spend a good one to two hours in sitting with us. So... Um, yeah, it's, it's a real good point of point of difference. Tell us about the free parking petition. Oh, we've got a free, the council have got a free parking condition here and they want everyone to sign what they feel we should be doing. So you've got three categories. Option one, return to pre-July pre status. Option two, retain current free parking everywhere. Option three, introduce a one-hour free park through the CBD. And if anyone wants to sign it, go into your local shops, they've got them there. The Nelson Arts Festival kicks off in its 20th year this year with a light projection show at Founders next Thursday evening. So we sent Stephanie out to catch up with busy festival organiser Sophie Kelly of Nelson City Council to see what people can expect for this festival. Next to me is Sophie Kelly and she's going to talk about the Arts Festival which starts next week. Sophie, what are you going to kick it off with? Well, um, we like to start the festival with the Mass Parade and Carnival. That's the traditional way for us to really kick off um, the celebrations. However, we do actually open on Thursday, the day prior, um, just the way the scheduling works um, this year, and with a big show that we've programmed consciously to mark our 20th anniversary, which is uh, Beyond, which is a big circus performance from Australia. Um, so that opens the festival on Thursday evening. Yeah. The mask parade is always a great way to get children and parents involved. What is this year's theme? This year's theme is um, Earth, Wind and Fire. So I think a lot of people have been really excited about that. There's different directions that um, people can, can choose to go, of course, or interpret that. Um, one of, of course, is the elements of Earth, Wind and, and Fire. So there's all sorts of lovely performance um, possibilities to use there. But then, of course, there's also the, the disco, which um, a lot of uh, sequins and glitter and, and colour. So um, I think people are really excited <coughs> Excuse me about the theme this year. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing the creations. Can you tell us about the kind of acts people can expect to see? Right, well on the Mass Parade and Carnival Night itself, um, once the parade finishes there will be roving performances um, taking place throughout the street. We've got all sorts of local street perform performers doing different circus acts and, and, and fire dancing and things like that. Um, we have the main stage itself on the, on the carnival stage. Uh, we've got a fantastic lineup this year. We have um, a group uh, called Latina Aotearoa who are a um, Latin um, sort of dance group and then, uh, and then we've also got 
got the headline act as a, a fantastic band from Auckland called Sal Valentine and the Baby Shakes. So uh, lots of sort of blues, rock and roll, and sure to get everybody dancing. How is the sale going so far? Sales are going great. We're really pleased with how the sales are tracking. We've got lots of sellouts already, which is wonderful um, for this time out from the festival. Um, uh, great, great response to the program. There's still plenty of tickets available to shows. I always like to encourage people to, you know, to, to get in there as quick as they can so they don't miss out. Yeah. Who can they expect to see perform for these street shows? Uh, well, the street shows are uh, primarily local performers, so um, there'll be there'll be performers and artists from Body in Space, Community Artworks, those kinds of organisations. Yeah. What time will there be? So that's part of the mass parade and the carnival. So that'll be after the mass parade finishes. So anything between sort of 6:30 and 10:30 at night, um, there'll be different performances taking place around the streets of Nelson. What about parking? Where should people avoid to park? Good question. So parking is um, definitely an issue on the night of Mass Parade and Carnival. Um, we do ask people to start coming and uh, dropping their children or the in the mass and all their things off um, quite early in the day, from about four o'clock ideally. Um, we just ask that people consider or be mindful that many of the streets will be closed, so to park a little bit outside of the main centre and just to walk into town would be really helpful. Um, or even better to carpool to try and share cars driving in and out of the centre. Yeah. I would say is um, just encourage people to go and pick up a brochure. Um, it kicks off next week, so there's uh, programs uh, here at the Nelson City Council, public libraries, um, most of the retailers around Nelson, and also at the Theatre Royal is where you can purchase tickets, or online, of course, nelsonartsfestival.co.nz. Last week, Mainland caught up with the Motueka Over 50s walking group who were taking advantage of the fabulous trek up Nelson's centre of New Zealand and I spoke with Jill from the group. It's a busy day up here on the top of centre of New Zealand and we've come across this group of um, active people and we're just wondering what are they doing here today? Hi, well we're the 50 plus group from Motueka who love this beautiful country so much we can't get enough of it. So each Thursday we go out for a walk and we're usually out from about nine in the morning till three or four in the afternoon wow. walking all over this lovely area very nice and, uh, and you're from Motueka so you do all the tracks around the top yeah. of the south yeah we go on all the tracks that are this side of Takaka and over the hill and um, all around Motueka itself and we're very fortunate because lo local landowners allow us to walk on their land, so oh, that's really good. That's yeah. Really. And um, after people see this, they might want to leap out there and join the 50 Plus Working Group. Um, how can they get in contact with you? Well, they can look in the local paper because each week in The Guardian we have a little piece which tells you where we're going that week. Um, and my telephone number is there so they can give me a ring and I'll give them all the details and we'd love to see them. Excellent. Thank you very much and have fun for the day. Thank you very much. A report from Cruise New Zealand last week shows cruise ships are expected to make 124 voyages around New Zealand, spending 712 days at ports throughout the country during the 2014-15 cruise season. The main cruise ports and emerging cruise destinations like Nelson, Kaikoura and Stewart Island are all expected to reap the cruise sector's spread of wealth throughout New Zealand, according to Cruise New Zealand General Manager Ray Wyn Tan. However, the question must be asked, with only one-day visits in smaller centres like Nelson, what are the real benefits to Nelson and its businesses? I asked Ray Wyn Tan the questions. How do you come up with those figures? Uh, so we commissioned Market Economics to do it for us. They've been doing that for several years now. Um, and they basically um, uh, use all the surveys that have been done uh, in the different parts of the cruise region. So, for example, ECRO has done one. COVAC has also done one nationally. So yep. they basically bring together all these different pockets of research. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. So yeah, it's, I, it's hard. Sorry, it, it's really hard to explain it, but, um, yeah. It's, it's all done by market research and they kind of use all the different um, research that they've got access to and um, uh, create like um, create it specifically for the New Zealand environment so that it's all uh, you can extrapolate it. Yep. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. That makes sense. I'm so sorry. It's so waffly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. No, it's good. Yeah. No, they're great figures, and we, we yeah, we just wanted to just just to see where they came from. Um, 
Uh, when the cruise ships come to now, so in this season, uh, what kind of activities are planned for the passengers? Um, so with cruise ships, there are two ways in which the tours can be sold. So one is with um, the cruise ship, and that is usually handled by what we call ground handlers. So they're the destination experts that the cruise lines have contracted. Yeah. And um, and then there's also the um, F, what we call FIT. So they basically find whatever they can find online and book it themselves. So with Nelson, obviously, there's things like um, your World Wearable Art, Abel Tisman, um, your wine tasting, beer tastings, um, your crafts, um, your arts and crafts culture, um, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that's good. Yeah, I know. It's, it's really big, that's for sure. Um, and um, how can the Nelson businesses get on board with this, with your market, with the market of on the cruise ship? Um, we, they need to make themselves available to the, they need to make themselves known to the regional tourism organization, Nelson Tasman Tourism. Yeah. Just because we work quite closely with them. Um, ground handlers, when they look to um, investigate uh, products in a region, the, the first stop is usually the regional tourism organization. So um, your RTO, the RTO needs to be familiar with the product. Um, if it is something that is um, suitable for selling on board ships by ground handlers, then, um, um, you know, that's one channel to work via. But then if it's um, more suitable for the independent passenger, then we say you need to make yourself known to the local eyesight. Yeah. Because um, passengers off a ship will tend to go to the eyesight to book their own tours for the day. Yeah. Or even having a really good web presence. And um, so f to distinguish themselves, um, we try and advise them to create a web page that has acknowledgement of the cruise ship's arrival and departure times because as a passenger you look at that page <laughs> and see, you know that if the tour operator acknowledges what time the ship leaves then I feel I feel assured that you know you're not going to leave me behind that you're going to make sure that I arrive back in time for my ship yeah sure we're, we're always worried about that when we're out on on some sort of excursion aren't we <laughs> um and um what would be what what do you feel would be the real benefit for the Nelson businesses like on the ground What do you mean by real benefit? Well, the thing is that a lot of the, the cruise ship comes into Nelson, we're talking about for only, one, for only one day, a short period, and a lot of the cruise ship visitors seem to get onto tours that actually go out of the Nelson region, such as Tasman, uh, Able Tasman, and the wineries, which are all in the Tasman area. So just, just trying to keep the passengers in town and to actually sh to go to our local businesses um, we're just wondering what is the real benefit for these businesses in town that we're, we're concerned about. What we've found with a New Zealand cruise is that passengers tend to use it as a reconnaissance for a later, more in-depth stay. So for this, um, this year we've got access to um, market view electronic card data, which basically traces um, electronic credit card spin. Yep. And we've found that passengers do come back after their cruise and in fact they come back within the calendar year so for wow. example a passenger that cruise in the 12 13 season um, a high propensity of them would uh, come back in the 2013 year yeah and we're talking about figures as much as 40 percent wow well, that yeah well that's certainly fantastic news for sure yeah so yeah so you know for regions like nelson um I mean, I mean, to use Gisborne as one example, as one example, for this season, fourteen fifteen, they're not getting a single cruise call, but they still have got our our research shows that they've still got some spin from cruise, and that's because of the pre-post. So it's not just passengers coming back for the next visit, but also for those that um, start or end their voyages in New Zealand, they also have the ability to travel around New Zealand. Yeah, of course, and and so of course, the cruise footprint is beyond that of the actual visit in port on that day. Yeah, sure, and of course, they're going back and telling all their friends and family how wonderful it was. Yeah, we hope so. <laughs> um, that that um, research and that data that you're talking about of the um, of the credit card transactions is that available for us per se, so that we could show the businesses, hey, they came here in this year, but look, they've all came back at, at a later date. Is that do you make that available? No, that's for our members only. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's just it's but just I'm such a good. Still, it's not. I'm still working through that that paper anyway. It's not even finalized. Yeah, yeah. It's. Yet. I mean, that's such a good selling point for sure. Yeah. 
Hey Raywin, that's that's fantastic. Thanks very much, and thanks for all the all your work you're doing in promoting Nelson and the rest of the country. Yeah, I mean it's a great it's a great region, and I have to give credit to your stakeholders like um, Nelson Tasman Tourism and um, Port Nelson. Like they're just really pro cruise, and they work really well together. Like you know they received, um, I think was it last year they worked together and produced cruise maps and they had cruise ambassadors and. Yes. provided such a great welcome for the cruise passengers. So Nelson is definitely one of the regions that we're really proud of. Oh great, yeah, thanks very much. We also asked a couple of retailers their thoughts on cruise ship visits to Nelson. Um, often on board a cruise ship it's a group atmosphere and there's a lot of um, encouragement to do the, the things that the, um, are going on on board, so having a little bit of, of private time and t time to explore the destinations is a really important part of cruising. Um, and Nelson is perfect for that because you can wander, get lost, meet the culture and the people of, of the destination you're going to and it's a, it's a destination I think Nelson where a lot of our international passengers will be able to sit down at dinner with their friends when they return home and say hey wow I went to this country, I went to this awesome place it was Nelson and let me tell you all about it. So it's bigger than those people on the ship on the particular day spending their money, it actually increases the business um, and, and Nelson is a destination. Um, especially us being so isolated at somewhere that's potentially off the, the beaten track for travellers from the UK, Europe, um, yeah, anywhere else. So it's, it's really important to have them docking in Nelson, in particular the types of ships that are coming in, uh, the luxury, um, luxury vessels, they have to be smaller. I don't believe Nelson really has the facilities and the infrastructure to support the major um, three to four thousand people on board a ship. Um, and it's not, yeah, it's, it's not really the perfect destination for that, but it's it's a perfect destination for people who want something that's a little bit different. Um, and Nelson offers that. Yeah. First of all, it is always great to have people from all over the world here. I think that is just nourishment. You cannot describe it differently. Um, then, of course, we have a lot to offer here, so it's a, a two-sided thing, really. What were the benefits for your business when there was a cruise ship in port? The benefits were that people came into the shop. People were genuinely interested in what we had to offer, first of all through our name, Global Culture, and then they saw what we have and people would just really buy New Zealand inspired um, products. And finally, this time last year, Mainland News reported that local man Kelly McGarry was the first ever rider to backflip over a 72 metre canyon in the 2013 Red Bull Rampage in Utah. Enthralling the crowds and gaining a reputation for fearlessness, this year Kelly McGarry was very much a crowd favourite but took a dive not once but twice for the Red Bull Rampage in Utah earlier in the month. Red Bull Rampage is one of the toughest and most physical free ride mountain bike events on the planet. The terrain takes no prisoners if the riders make a slightest mistake or a wrong approach out on the course. McGarry's first mishap took place during a practice only days before the competition began, with his second attempt causing him to undershoot the jump, destroying both his wheels on his bike. He didn't suffer any serious physical injuries in either accident, his bike however suffered the damage and still remained repairable. We leave you now with his completed run for this year's event.
After the break, we'll bring you the latest weather update and some events and happenings coming up from around the region. We're the team at JCAR, right here in Nelson, 120 Hardy Street. Our shop is full of electronic items, including security alarm systems, electronic components, solar and power, electronics toys, sound systems, cables and much, much more. Jacob. 120 Hardy Street, Nelson. Why would you want to pay as much as $1,000 for a single bed mattress when you can buy a high quality locally made mattress like this for as little as $220? And a queen size mattress could cost you in excess of $3,000, but at Nelson Beds you could have a mattress like this as low as $425. So why would you go out and spend a fortune on your child's bedroom when you can come to Nelson Beds and buy a complete single mattress and base set, a 7 drawer scotch chest, a headboard and a 3 drawer bedside cabinet for as little as $979? So call and discuss our custom manufacturing options and local after sales service at Nelson Beds, Nelson's only bedding manufacturer. O oh, to be healthy. Lifestyle, diet and exercise complemented with quality supplements can provide you the insurance vital for your natural health and well-being. With over 10 years professional experience making some of New Zealand's most trusted nutritional supplement brands, visit the O2B Healthy Factory Outlet in Wakatu Industrial Estate. Over 200 supplements to choose from, free on-site parking, no middlemen. O2B Healthy. Caring for you naturally. Hi, my name's Ian Mortimer. Mortimer Auto Upholstery is your one-stop shop for all your upholstery needs. We do car and boat interiors, boat canopies, ute tonne covers, canvas and PVC fabrication. Call in and see us in Oxford Mews, 72 Oxford Street, Richmond. Victory 60 Plus is on Tuesdays at 1.30 through to 3.30pm at 238 Upper Vanguard Street. You can join in for cards, games and a cuppa. For more information you can contact Jan on 546 9057 or 027 9555. On behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thank you for joining us and we'll bring you the latest news and events from around the region again tomorrow. Discover the Belgrove Tavern just 20 minutes south of Richmond on State Highway 6. A restaurant, functions, weddings, barbecue, a garden bar with lots of room for kids. Come and see us.